Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah. Today, inshallah, we are going to discuss a new lesson from Mega Goal 6 in second semester with me and teacher Sami. Let's begin. Our lesson today is complete about the previous one from expansion 1 to 3. Okay, at first we have some introduction we should or uh, we should follow it before every lesson. Number one, the purpose of this tips to give a comprehensive review from the first unit to the third unit. Number two, we will improve your memory about the previous grammar, vocabulary, reading, and writing. Number three, this is the important one. Make sure to open the book on the required pages and follow the instructions carefully in order to facilitate understanding and answer. Okay, let's begin by our objectives today. Our objectives today have four points. Number one, we should discuss the past models have a different form when we talking about the past. This is the first point. And number two, such that and so that, and the purpose of it and how we can apply it with the question. Number three, Past progressive, what do you think? Or how we can apply past progressive with our sentence? What is the structure of it? What is the main purpose from using it? The last one is noun clauses. About noun clauses, be attention that we have four points down of it. So number one, beginning with that, this is the first point. And the second one, after verbs. And the third one, after adjective. And the last point, as a subject of sentence. By the end of this lesson, I hope we achieve all these objects, inshallah. Okay. The first one, or the first point uh, from our objectives is models in the past. What do you think models in the past is? So... At first, when I want to answer this question, I should notice that we have models in the present. As what? We have many, much, few, little, could, should, and etc. But in, when I want to apply it in the past tense, how can I apply it? What is the structure of it? In which time are you uh, are using it? So we can use this past models with the situation that happening in the, uh, happened sorry, in the past. Okay, let me check together. For example, we have may have, might have. So may have and might have is the same grade, followed by past participle. Pay attention that I'm talking about the past situation. So when I want to using may have or might have, I should follow it with the past participle. This is the usage of it. I used to suggest uncertainty or possibility about the past. So these two models when I use it, which means that I want to give a suggestion about possibility in the past. Okay, let me take an example about it. For example, when I say, I lost my cell phone. I lost my cell phone. I may have left it at school. So I'm not sure uh, absolutely 100% that I'm losing it or lose it in my class or school. So I may have left it, maybe there or maybe not. I may have left it at a school. This is number one. Is it make a sense to you that when we want to use may have or might have, we should follow it by the past participle. So what is the past participle of this sentence? It is the word left. It is the word left. Okay, what is the second situation from these models in the past? We have could have also when we want to using it, we should follow it by past participle. And what is the usage of it? It's used in two ways. So could have plus past participle, we can use it in two ways. Number one, for or to talk about the past with uncertainty. This is the first situation about it. Number two, when I want to talk about an option in the past that was not taken, 
already that option happened in the past but not taken. I can use it or I can use could have plus past participle. Okay, let me apply it with an example. Okay, look at the example. For example, do you think I could have left my cell phone at your house? So they're using this sentence as a question. And they, from that question, we notice that the could here or the purpose for it with the followed by have and past participle have two situations. When I want to talk, for example, he wants to tell us that he maybe or uh, could have asked the other person that he forgot or uh, his cell phone at the house and the other things that show us that this option, it doesn't happen already or it didn't happen already in the past. This is the second one. Let we go for the third one. Okay, after we discussed may have, might have, and could have. The third one is must have. We noticed that all these models in the past, we should follow it by past participle. So left, left until now, we want to see what happening with, or what happened with must. We used for drawing conclusions about the past. If I want to make a conclusion about something happened in the past, with using the past models, I should use that must have. Then I followed the models by past participle. Let me give uh, an example. For example, I got lost on the way here. I must have taken a wrong turn somewhere. So from here, he want to analyze that. After he lost, or uh, she lost the way, what happened? I must, or she must, or he must, taken a wrong turn somewhere. Which means that this is the conclusion after that reason happened in the first part. So must have applied also with past participle. What is the past participle inside the sentence? Taken. We apply must have followed by past participle. This is the third one. The fourth one is should have also followed by past participle. Okay, let me check what is the usage of it. We used to talk about mistakes ma made in the past. So they specify this short with these mistakes. I can use it with my mistakes, must or could or may or might. They analyze that should, we can use it, it with, our, uh, with my mistakes or your mistakes. If you do any mistakes, you should use the past models should. But no, I want to notice you that if the, that happened in the past, we should using should. So they, they give it to us the uh, important thing that all this situation happened in the past. Okay, what is the example of it? For example, when I say, you should have apologized for your mistakes. So, should have, then followed by past participle. Should have apologized for your mistake. This is the fourth one. Okay, the last point for our models in the past is was or were supposed to. This is a different situation about this fourth before. They told us that when we want to use was or were supposed to, we should follow it by the base verb, not past participle, the base verb. What they mean base verb? Base verb, which means that the infinity of the verb, which come in without any addition in the it, in the present tense. Okay, use the express that an expected action didn't happen. What is the use of it? When I want to express that an expected action didn't happen, not that uh, happen, they told us that this is the thing, the main th uh, things that this action didn't happen. Okay, look at the example. For example, where were you last night? They asking you, where were you last night? What is the answer for it? You were supposed to help me with my essay. So this is where, I'm using where because I have you. So you were, he, she, it was. 
followed by was and the other one we 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 followed it by where so we were supposed to help me with my essay notice that the base verb here is help we can say help write sleep eat etc but the important thing that we should bring it in the base verb okay this is the conclusion for our lesson today the second part we will talk about is such that or so that what do you think such that or so that is it and how we can using it such and so make the meaning of an adjective or adverb stronger so when if I want to use so individually or such individually which means that I make the adjective inside the sentence is a stronger okay but I want to applying it in the past how can I apply it so such that and so that are used to show the cause and effect when I want to applying it with the something happened in the past I should follow it by that okay which means that they divide the sentence for cause and effect not as the previous one in the present tense they give it uh, or they make it the adjective strong no now in the past situation make our sentence cause and effect okay let we check together there, this is the structure of it such plus adjective plus noun plus that so such we should follow it by adjective then noun plus that I think if you want um, more review or full review as is necessary you can return to your book okay the second situation with so so plus adjective or adverb so with so I can use an adjective or adverb and I followed it by that the third one is so followed by many or few so if I want to use many or few plus plural count noun so they, they told us that we should bring a count noun with many and few. And after that, we followed it by that. The fourth one is so with much and little. What do you think much and little is? We're using it with uncountable noun. So, so plus much or sorry, so much, little. We can uh, choose one of them, much or little. And uncount noun then plus that. If you notice that all of them, they follow the process, but except what so, we can use it with adjective or adverb, and they divide it or analyze it with some of the adjective down. Okay, I want to note you that, that is as frequently left out in casual speech. What they mean by that? If I have, or if I make the sentence with so that, and for example such that if I want to speak I using the sentence in a speech only I should omit that okay look at the example the book was so popular I can omit that it is sold out within a week so it doesn't change the meaning for the word for the sentence so when I want just one two speech not in write on speech okay the book was so popular it sold out within a week but I want if I want to applying it in a write or in a writing what I should do I should add that which means that I join these two sentence as a cause and effect does it make a sense inshallah okay now we will transfer for the second question or the second point for our objectives today past progressive what do you think past progressive is and how we can using it? Okay, we, I want to notice you that the past progressive is absolutely different about the, uh, about the models or the past models that we mentioned it already. So the past progressive, we use it be and present, oh sorry, uh, present participle to describe a long action that is interrupted by a short action. So if, if we have a long action in our sentence, we should, uh, and we want to uh, interrupt it by another action, we should uh, apply that past progressive. What 
is the structure of it? The structure of it, B plus present participle. Okay, look at the example. For example, as Faisal was walking down in Riyadh Street, comma, a cat fell down from a fourth, sto uh, fourth story window. Okay, so what do you think is it? As Faisal was walking down in Riyadh is the long action. And what is the th uh, uh, short action that a cat fell from a fourth story window? So we apply the past progressive inside the sentence and we interrupted the long one by a short action. Okay, they told us that we can use or we also using it in the other situation. If we want to describe what was happening at a specific time in the past, we can using past progressive B plus present participle. Number two, we can use it with always to describe a repeated action. So if they want from me to repeat the action again and again, I should use past, sorry, uh, past progressive, which means that inside B plus present progressive. Uh, sorry, uh, B plus present participle. Number three, to describe two actions that were happening in the same time. So if I want to describe two things happen in the same time, I should apply this past progressive with it, which means that I should put be plus present progressive. What is the present progressive, uh, uh, sorry, uh, the present participle in this uh, slide is that we will bring the verb with ing after we put be already. Okay. Now we will transfer for the last slide for our lesson today is the noun clauses. Let me give you some notice about the noun clauses. Noun clauses as what we talking before again and again that a dependent clause have a specific situation. So I can't use it in any time with any situation. We have some situation and some points and some kinds of uh, and a, a noun clause, we should follow it when we want to use a noun clause. For example, we have a fourth situation or a four point or the fourth things that belong to noun clause. Number one, when I want to using it inside the sentence and I want to join two sentences together, I should apply this noun tense or noun clause beginning with that. How can I apply that one? Look at this sentence. I think that beauty is about what is on side of a person. From the example, we notice that we use it to make a statement with another statement. So I think is a statement, depend. And beauty is about what is on the inside of a person is the another one. How can I join these two statements? I using a noun clause by that. Number two, after verbs, a noun can follow certain verbs. So they told us that this noun can follow by a certain verbs. What was mentioned in your book, page 36. Let we take one example or let us take one example about it. Do you think beauty products make someone or some people look better? How can I join these two statements? Or why I'm using that one? Because I want to bring a noun after certain verbs. So do you think that beauty products make someone or some people look better? We apply already that a noun can follow certain verbs in this sentence. Number three, after adjective, a noun clause often follows Follows by what? Be a certain adjective. So in this situation, exactly, we can't use all of the adjectives that we have. No, they, they told us that a certain adjectives, we can use it when we want to prepare or make a sentence on noun clause. All of that certain adjectives, I mentioned it in your book also. For example, she doesn't seem to be aware. Okay, the second part, her dress is no longer in style. So how can I apply this noun 
a, uh, a clause, I bring be, then I bring the adjective from that certain adjective they give it to us, aware. So to be aware. Then I did put this conjunction that to join these two statements together. She doesn't seem to be aware that her, her dress is no longer in style. Number four, as a subject of sentence, this is sentence usually began with it. So they told us, when I want to apply this noun clause as a subject in my statement or in your statement, what do you think so to do? We usually begin with it, okay? Look, at, and they, they told us also, common expression that began sentence with the noun clause as the subject on your book, page 36. So there is a certain subject, they fit with the noun clauses. Okay, look at the example down. It is surprising that toothbrushes only became common in the 20th century. So what do you think is it? We using a noun as a subject, it is a surprising that toothbrushes only became. And what we do also, we join these two statements by that. So it is a surprising that what they mean by as a subject in the sentence, then we complete the other state, uh, half of part uh, the statements by joining our uh, conjunctions that toothbrushes only became common in the 20th century. Okay, by the end of this lesson, I would be thanks you for joining for my class and thank you so much.